Hi, Thelma. I see the others join us here momentarily. Grace was late getting the notice up, so. Uh, excuse me, you were late getting the class done. I tried yesterday. And said, I'm not ready. Yeah, well, my point is we didn't have a link for everybody. So, anyways, yeah. <laughs> I hope you're doing okay. I think our others will join us here momentarily as soon as I figure out we're out here. I think everybody knew we had class today. We just didn't have a link to go to till just now. So. Oh, today we're going to use a husking board. That should be fun. I've been playing with mine. and There's lots of things you can do with a husking board. So. That's the thought for the day. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I open this again, if I'm going to dump more tools or if I'll get them put away. We'll give it a shot here. Okay. Oh. <laughs> well, there's another one dancing across the table. We'll just set that one out for later. Okay. Oh, and there's a pearl. That has appeared out of nowhere. So do I want a pearl? Can you hear me okay, Thelma? Okay, she said yes. I didn't get on to watch that video you told me about yet. I got, I went on, but then I think I got distracted with one of her other videos. And I watched that and subscribed to her channel so I can go back and watch the rest of what she has to show me. There's Adeline. Hello, Adeline. We're just kind of hanging out here a minute and letting everybody find us since we put the link up late. So. <clears throat> Grace and Lauren went shopping at their favorite spice store, Pensies, <clears throat> and they almost forgot us. <laughs> Bryce said, no, we didn't almost forget you. We forgot you. <laughs> oh. Okay. Let's go ahead and put the camera on my hands and I'll at least show them a little bit about what we're going to do today. And the camera is, oh, okay, yeah, maybe you can lift it just a little or put it down or whatever you have to do. It's, there we go. That's better. Can you move my face? It's right in the middle of my work. There we go. The little tool we're going to use today is commonly referred to as a husking board. It really reminds me a great deal. If you happen to have used one in the past, it reminds me a great deal of the old thingamajigs for, um, doing metal work um if you you um where you wipe um, wrap your wire around the little pegs to get different shapes with your wire in fact one of the videos that i was watching to learn to use this tool is um the second half of the video she was doing with wire wrapping around and making bases for earrings and things. So kind of a dual purpose tool there. <clears throat> the basic gist behind the husking board is that it's this little tool. It's about four inches square, I think. And it has a little drawer in it. And the drawer is filled with these little pegs. And you can put your pegs wherever you like. And then we can begin wrapping our flower petals, our round 
little flower petals and other things we might make. We can set up all different kinds of patterns. So for circular patterns or patterns where a circular design works out well, you've got this, I got some glue on here from yesterday. Let me peel that out, get it out of my way. Um, for floral patterns and things that work out well with a circular pattern, we've got this half of the board that's done on a half circle. And then for vertical or horizontal designs, we've got this area that's set up on lines. So it's a pretty versatile little board for making a variety of different things. I realize it's just the three of us right now, but we don't know for sure when the others are going to join us. So I think we're going to go ahead and just get started and they can wander in since it's now about five after. <laughs> The paper I'm using today, we don't actually sell this paper as it is here in the store as just a paper pack, but this is a Quilled Creations paper pack. Um, just a lot of the books I had didn't mention using a husking board. Oh, it's brown. I don't think I went brown. Um, didn't mention using a husking board, so I went to our store, which is not yet open, but will be open Monday. I went to our store because I thought we had a kit, and sure enough, we did. It's called Husking Hoops and Loops, and here's some of the pattern ideas, and I kind of started out using some of these to get an idea of where to go with this craft. And I did find some pretty good husking directions also in this book, Paper Quilling for the First Time. This author, Allie Bartowski, I think she's pretty good. So there were a few pages of husking designs in here. Now, as we work on this, you might it might occur to you that some of what we're doing looks a lot like what we did on the comb. And some of the patterns are interchangeable for working on a comb versus working on the husking board. I'm going to keep this out because I want to try one of those stars. Maybe we'll do that together. I haven't done one yet, but nothing quite like jumping right into the deep end. Huh? <clears throat> I said that this paper came in the pack and it's not one that we have in the store. What makes this paper different is that it's two different colors on the two different sides of the paper. And I was fooling around yesterday. It went out to eBay and I was surprised at eBay versus Amazon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to glue three pieces of paper together to start here with our flower. If I have enough, huh? we have enough of this. Do I have more of this? Yeah, I have more of this. Maybe I don't. I'm going to use purple instead because I'm not sure I had enough of that. Um, I was surprised how many previously used books. <coughs> And for quilling, you could get on the eBay for six or seven dollars shipped. So that was a good price. I thought I'd alert you to look out on eBay. <clears throat> and they had some big, good, really nice quilling books for you know five to eight dollars a piece shipped. They of course they had some more expensive ones too, but um they had some really good titles, very inexpensive. Um, when my books start to come in, I will show you the books that I've gotten that I like the most in case you want to go searching for some of them. I think I told you last week 
that one of my books that I have enjoyed the most on some of my recent purchases, this is one of the ones that I have enjoyed a great deal. I recommend this author, Elizabeth Mode. This is the one I took a lot of our Christmas ideas from last week from. Hi, Betty. It's nice to see you. Thanks for checking in. So that's one I certainly recommend. And I will let you know as I scan through some of the other new-to-me books that I have coming. They're not new books. They're new used books. <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me, and when those come in, don't know why I'm so froggy today. Excuse me if I <clears throat> keep clearing my throat. It's been a little bit, um, <clears throat> our weather's kind of a little, taking kind of a respite in the heat for a little bit more um, cooler, but... Um, that's the word I'm looking for. Cooler but damper weather. And I think that's <clears throat> kind of influencing me a bit. So just ignore my clearing of my throat and other weird noises I'm into today. <laughs> uh, so anyway, as those books come in, when I have a chance to really peruse them and try some of their patterns and directions. I'll tell you some that I think are good. I also want to really encourage you to take a look at the um, video um, selections here on YouTube. There are some really good crafters out here on, on um, YouTube with some really excellent excellent videos. In fact, I think I'll do a newsletter tonight to give a construction update. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, maybe I'll go ahead and publish a list of those um, of those videos that I'm really enjoying as we've gone through this crafting series. So the construction update, let me take a minute to do that while we wait and see if some of the others will come in. The construction is done. <laughs> the guys are here today picking up and cleaning up all the construction mess. The construction is done. The floors went back in. The insulation or the framing went back in the walls. The insulation went back in the walls. The sheetrock went on the walls. It's been taped textured. We're not going to paint the, the stock room for right now because it gets all covered up with the shelves anyway. So it really kind of seems like a waste of time and money to paint that room when we have bookshelves virtually covering the walls in that room. <clears throat> and um, Brittany, Margie, and Bryce worked their socks off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, emptying 150 boxes of Hunky Dory back onto the shelves, reorganizing all those materials, trying to get the best possible organization of, of our materials. Um, would you get me a paper towel or tissue out of the bathroom, please? I got nose running now. <clears throat> um, hi, Karen. So, um, they are, thank you very much. I, I don't know if it's something in the air or just the weather or what it is, but all of a sudden I'm very froggy. And, uh, yeah. So um, they also were able to take the, um, for since the, the original big flood that we had down there were... <laughs> We had two to three inches of water on the floor throughout the entire lower story. <clears throat> All the bookcases have been up on two by fours to set them up higher. 
and protect them from any any further <laughs> water intrusions we might have and get, just keep the product safe. And now that we've got the whole drainage system put in and a guarantee that we will never see another flood, <clears throat> they actually worked on unloading all those bookcases, taking all the bookcases off of the two by fours, lining everything back up in nice straight rows and restraightening everything. So uh, the shop is looking great, really good. It's all put back together. Everything has been vacuumed and dusted and <laughs> um, just really spiffied up. It, it looks better than it did before the construction project. And all our products were kept perfectly safe and dust free and odor free and, you know, just perfectly safe in a big plastic. <laughs> capsule around all of the products in the store so everybody did a really good job of keeping our product safe we will reopen on monday i want to work do some work in <clears throat> the ebay amazon and etsy stores and make sure that everything that's listed in those stores is still available we've had some problems with inventory updates after we did the huge sale in the store our inventory went off and, you know, got off track and some of the, um, in, in our other stores. So I want to make sure that everything's back online. So I'm going to probably just wipe out the inventory in the stores and then push it out again to make sure that everything is, you know, that we're advertising we have, we still have, because as you know, we cleared about a third probably of all of our hunky dory products during the big sales before the construction, but it is done, 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 done. So yay us. It will be so nice to get the store back open and just kind of get back to a sense of normalcy. Can you come in a little closer, honey? I want to show them what I'm doing here and probably need a little closer view at this board in order to tell. Um, I guess that's okay. Um, I wrapped the end of my piece around on itself and just glued a little tail there. So I have an anchor and I'm going to put this piece down on my anchor. I've set up my pegs so that just for the heck of it, I did, there was no real rhyme or reason to why I chose the placement of the pegs I did today. Just it's a nice in-between flower size. I made this one before, and this one that we'll do for demo will be just slightly different size than the prior one. So I'm going to come straight up and around that first peg. When I come down here to my base, I'm going to add just a dab of glue, just a dab of glue at the bottom there. I probably will move this board while I work because I find it easier to move the board to do what I want to do. Oh, you know what? I actually, I just set this up to use these and I really need a different kind of paper. I'll use this for my next one. Um, the reason I said that is <coughs> that this one doesn't, it, you know, I let, I use the, the paper that was two different colors. And I actually really liked that on some of my flowers, but where I'm wrapping around the edge, it kind of pulls it all back together in one color. This doesn't have a wrap around the edge, so I need to use regular cooling paper. <coughs> so let me get a different paper choice here to get me started. It's solid color on both sides. That's I'm doing a really terrible job of saying what I want is solid color paper. <clears throat> I think I'll make a snowflake sort of thing. Let's use this white. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> well, I think we're about the only part of the country thus far that has kind of escaped the major heat wave that's hitting the rest of the country. But <laughs> it's coming here. I think we have one more day of reasonable coolness. 
and then we're going to be in the hundreds this coming week too <clears throat> so we'll all suffer together <clears throat> there must be something new in the air today <clears throat> Because I'm just sniffling and snorting and carrying around, carrying on. It's still warm here. It's in the 80s and 90s, but that's kind of normal and typical for this time of year. And actually hitting 100 a time or two <coughs> is kind of normal for us in August. So we're headed in. Can I tell you my news of the day, my most exciting news? After so much more challenge than anticipated, my property in Kelso, Grandma's house, is sold. It's sold. It's done. Yesterday, it finished. So... That is really good news. Hi, Mary R. Good to see you. So what I'm going to do right here, right now, is create a little anchor. I'm just creating a tiny little loop. There you are. You are on the wrong link. Did we have a different link out there? Huh. <clears throat> the house is sold. It was way more. Stress and difficulty than I anticipated when I put that house up for sale. Okay, now I'm going to start again. <laughs> I'm wrapping this white around my pigs. You'll notice I just pushed them down to the bottom. I have noticed when using this husking board that one of the challenges that... Hi, Kathy, girly girl. We were in an, off in another room having a chat. Well, I don't know where you guys were. <laughs> anyway, um, one of the things I've noticed when using this husking board is that the paper has a tendency, if you let it, to crawl up this peg and kind of sit row on top of row. And when there were two postings, they said, That's weird, isn't it? Huh. She's probably sitting out there on the other one. Huh. Well, she'll probably come in since she often comes in a little late. There's Sharma. Hi. Okay. So I, one of the things I've noticed with the husking board is that I have to be careful that my paper doesn't start crawling up the peg and sit um, on top of one another. I found that... The best way to keep that from happening is to put a little dab of glue right here at, on the back of my base. And then when I come back around, I will put it there again. This actually serves the purpose of not only holding my flower together, but it keeps my flower petals from, from climbing up on top of each other. <clears throat> I'm so happy to have Grandma's house finally sold. Uh, we had to extend the purchase time frame on Lauren's house twice because we weren't, well, first time, the FHA lenders denied our deal we had worked out with our roofer to come in. I'm just working my way back and forth. You see that, guys? I'm just working my way across the pegs back and forth. I sure got a bunch of glue at the bottom there. Get that cleaned up, too. Don't want to be filling in all my little peg holes with glue. In fact, I'm going to take this and clear the glue right now. <clears throat> so it just ended up getting Kelso sold was a bit of a nightmare project, but we got it. It's done. 
as of yesterday it's done and we close on Lawrence on well it's our Lawrence and ours we close on our duplex next Friday okay so I'm working my way back and forth I started with the middle peg and then I'm making a loop around each subsequent around each subsequent peg adding some glue to the back of that peg which like I said serves the purpose of causing me to look at it when I put the glue on and make sure that it's not crawling up the peg because if it does that and it gets kind of layered stacked one layer on top of the other layer it won't lay flat so you really don't want it to that paper to crawl up and lay on top of each other <coughs> Hi, Kim. Hi, Ruth. Hi, June. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> the Hunky Dory Blockbuster is expected. It was um, expected at the distributor the end of July, which is virtually here. So it should be coming our way. I would say it should ship to us within the next week to two weeks. <coughs> the renter ultimately bought it. So the tenant that was living in the property already did end up being able to buy the house. And I know that's a real relief to him and his fiance. They really, really wanted the house, but between his time limitations at work and very difficult lending conditions imposed by FHA. Boy, it was touch and go, I'll tell you. <clears throat> I gotta keep crawling up. <clears throat> okay, so we've got our final layer here. I'm going to go ahead and tear that off. I'm going to kind of clean the glue away from the posts as best we can and let that sit for just a minute. This is what we are. <clears throat> yes, we definitely had to go a long way around the barn to get there, Kathy. But now I'm very, very appreciative and feeling blessed that we were able to get it done. Okay, once we have all of our layers on there, and we have a half round piece, as you can see, so we um, are going to need to take this off, create another. <clears throat> yes, I'm feeling fine. There's just something in the air today, Karen, and I, sorry, I sincerely apologize for all the sniffing and snorting and the gravelly voice. There's just something in the air today that's bothering me. I pulled my base peg out and then I can kind of tap this it slides right up and off isn't that pretty that's pretty just like that let's do another oh that would be a good peacock fan wouldn't it Annette that would be beautiful to do that it'd be beautiful to do to run two strips now you've made me think about it um it'd be really beautiful to do that in, in like a cobalt blue and a Kelly green and run two strips at a time. I'll bet I could figure out how to do that. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to use my needle tool to get any, I don't know how I got so messy with my little precision glue bottle. I mean, the whole idea is this precision. It shouldn't, I shouldn't have to make it that messy, but I did. Clear this out a little bit. Open my peg holes again. Okay, let's do another so we can <clears throat> attach our two pieces. Okay. So 
that is our big news there. I'm so happy to have that done. Boy, he like said that sale ended up being just a lot more than I expected. But it's done now. And we can move forward and purchase Lawrence. And while we've been fooling around getting Kelso done, the owners of the Vancouver property that we're buying got the new roof on Vancouver and the new bathtub put in in the unit that Lauren will be living in. You know, I've been a landlord for 40 years. That's just terrible. I shouldn't be able to say I've done anything for 40 years, but I have. I've been a landlord for more than 40 years now, and I have never, ever seen anybody manage to do the damage to a bathtub that the former tenants in this unit in Vancouver did. I don't know what they were doing with that bathtub, but... <laughs> They literally managed to take the finish off the bathtub and chip it up. And it was the craziest looking thing I have ever seen. So one of our conditions of purchase in Vancouver was that they replaced the bathtub. The current owners took one look at it and didn't even argue with us about it. They said, yep, yeah, we're going to do that. <laughs> so they had to put in a new bathtub shower surround. I have no idea what those people were doing. I don't even want to think about it. I mean, I don't know. Dissolving bodies in acid. Maybe I watch too many crime shows. <laughs> I don't know what they were doing, but it was... <clears throat> it was crazy. I don't know. Okay. So I, I put my anchor on my base peg here. On my board, I started in the center of the circular area, and I started my flowers coming in on the third row. Now I'm just working my way back and forth, wrapping around each peg. And as I come down, we're going to make a daisy. That's what we're going to make this time. We'll make a little yellow center for this, and this is going to be really cute. <clears throat> For a time when I wasn't supposed to be doing as much because, you know, the store was closed and most of the classes weren't running, I just got to say I'll be really glad to be back to regular work because that was exhausting. <laughs> <clears throat> definitely, definitely need to be back to work. Having the store open chatting with you guys on a daily basis as we process your orders, working with you in classes. It's way more fun than buying and selling this property has been and dealing with having our shop and our house torn apart. We haven't, the only thing we have left to do downstairs now is to, we um, tore up, I haven't talked as much about it because that wasn't material to you, but um, the shop warehouse is on one end of the house and the, at Lauren's room and the spare room, a bathroom and the family rumor on the other end of the house and we did work on both ends of the house in that water management program so the only thing we have left to do in construction related stuff is to repaint over the tape and texture in the two bedrooms and we've decided we're not going to do that until Lauren moves because then we can replace her colors with more neutral colors. <laughs> I let the kids paint their rooms any colors they wanted when they were younger. They wanted way brighter colors than their old mom once. 
I don't know what that is with the second link, guys. I, I don't know. Because we just put the link up, so I don't know how we got two of them. Okay, tearing this off. We've got our little... Sorry, I keep walking this off screen. Okay. Got my... Oh, good. Good. Okay. We'll let that sit for just a minute. Kind of really let that glue solidify. Then we're going to pull our base peg out. Just tap it a little. And then this will lift right off. Really. <laughs> this just lifts right off the pegs then. Whoops. I didn't get enough glue in that last layer. Let's put a little more there. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Just so you can see what we're doing against our our a darker background instead of my gray white dingy gray table. It's my well-loved craft table. It's kind of dingy gray. I'm going to join those two in the center. Isn't that a pretty little daisy? Let's get a yellow or gold. Let's use a gold. A golden piece of quilling paper. I thought I had another one of those loose a minute ago, and then I lost it. It was in my lap. So we'll go ahead and put this on our tool. Thelma, did you get your um, your um, slotted tool, your fancier slot savvy, whatever savvy, whatever? tool from us or do I still owe you that could you let me know oh you could absolutely make a snowflake on that board in fact um yeah we are going to make a couple different things today that you could absolutely make a snowflake out <laughs> That wasn't one of my brighter moves right there. Well, let's just rewind that because sometimes you need to do it. No, you didn't get it. Okay. All right. Now that we can ship again, um, the, the savvy slotted tool. I tried one of those yesterday and I want to let you know that while the tool itself is really neat, it is really neat to use. Um, the with the savvy slotted tool from um, Quilled Creations, the barrel of the tool, the, the handle, it's got a big handle at the end, and then it's got this post, and then it's got the the tip. You spin, you you hold on to the end of the tool, and that doesn't move, and then you twist this. And it twists the, the paper up, which is really neat. But I did learn when using it that you do have to use a reasonable level of care because the second time I used one, I bent the tip the tip is really, really, really uh, fine. It's like our fine tip tweezers, you know, really, really fine. And it's very easy to bend the tip. 
if you bend the tip of the quilling tool, you can't fit the paper in it. It won't go in. So I used and destroyed mine all in one day. <laughs> So I'm tightly coiling this gold. <laughs> oh, I am just really not doing well here, guys. <laughs> this will be, it didn't come out of the tool all the way. And then it pulled loose. So I'm going to try again. I don't know why I'm having such trouble with my quilling, but my regular quilling, but I am, that's two times down. First time I let it go and it unwound on me. The second time I pulled it off the tool and didn't get the center out. So third time's the charm. How are you guys doing with Gemma, Mary? I'll bet you're having such fun with that puppy. Okay, let's try this again. This is not difficult, guys, but I'm having difficulty just because I'm being silly today. Not because it's a difficult operation. It's not a difficult operation at all. <laughs> Thank you, Thelma, for your generosity. <laughs> there we go. I got my daisy. I could, this could have actually been a little bigger for the size of my flower, but I'm not putting it back on the tool again. I'm going with it. <laughs> you know, one thing I could do, I don't know if I have any yellow gems that are really big. Let me see if I do. The yellow ones in there are big. Gold. I think I do have some big ones. Let's see if I have a big I do. Oh, that's gold. I wanted. Well, maybe there is one in there. If there is some. Maybe we'll just go with gold. I do like these. After I did all that, then maybe I'll use a gem instead of the... <laughs> a year or two ago, a oh, couple years. So the events in the pandemic, I'm not sure. Two, three years ago, Michaels did a huge, huge clearance event on all their flat back stones, and they had these big, beautiful boxes of these stones for, I mean, like containers this big. You know, like four inches, four inch containers that were an inch and a half wide. If you think about how many gems that is, that's a lot. And they sold them for like five bucks a package. So I bought one of each. And if I really liked them, I bought two of them. <laughs> and I will have gems from now till forever. Look at our beautiful daisy we just made. Isn't that cute? That's cute. That's really cute. That's fun. You know what this would be fun with? It would be fun with that 
with a stem like that fern that we made. Remember the fern we made a couple of weeks ago? I don't know, I might have to take the end off it to use it, but it'd be fun to put a, a stem like that on it and just do a card that features only that flower. You know what? I'm going to do it. Why not? I'm going to take that end piece off, glue that in there. Oh, maybe this is a quarter inch one and it's an eight inch flower, but it still looks cute. It still looks cute. I had that ferny piece sitting there. Wouldn't that be cute? Just have that by itself on a card for the little greeting. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> there's our first flower. And uh, obviously you can make those in all different sizes. You know, I made the bigger red one. And the white one. I really like the daisy best of all, though. Okay, next let's make a heart shape. No, next let's make a different shape. Let's get this glue cleaned out of here. I don't want to limit my ability to use those pig holes by having them glue dry in there. So I'll just use my needle tool to clean those out good. I'm going to use a peg to kind of clear it the rest of the way. There we go. Okay, let's pull these out. <coughs> and you can see that if you are just winding that, and, you know, sitting watching TV, you could make a dozen of those daisies in no time. <clears throat> okay, now let's set our board up to do something different here. I'm going to put one peg just below the halfway point, one peg down. I'm going to come up and I'm going to go here and here. So I'm going to put three pegs in. I'm going to come out and do one here and one here. So that's what I'm going to start with. Do I like that? No, I think this one needs to be one higher. So I'm going to go here. Okay. So I've got one. I skipped two holes and then I came up one more. I skipped one hole and came up one more. I skipped one hole each way and came down. There's my pattern for my pegs. <clears throat> I'm going to get that purple out that we had here a minute ago. And I already have a little loop in the end for my anchor. I'm going to come now, this is that double-sided paper I told you about. I'm going to come up and around. I'm going to use my glue bottle. Put a little glob of glue on the end here. Then I'm going to come up and around the top one. Put a little glob of glue at the end. Now I'm going to come the opposite direction and I'm going to pick up that side peg. <clears throat> Excuse me. Put a little glue there. Do the same thing on the other side. Pick up that side peg. OK, 
okay. So you see what I've done. And now I'm going to wrap around and I'm going to actually put a little spot of glue at the ends here of all three of those. I don't always want to do that. I'm choosing to this time, making sure everything is nice and flat. I'm going to put a little glue down this side to my bottom and I'm going to tear this off. I have this little kite shape pattern. <clears throat> Let that dry just a second. And I'm going to take this bottom peg out. I'm going to tap it just a little. That's going to allow me to lift it off. And here's my piece. Okay, we're going to do some more of these. This is how you're going to get that snowflake pattern. This could be a flower. It could be the beginnings of a snowflake. It could be the beginnings of a star. I will show you how you're going to get the different, the different, hi, Catherine how you're going to get the different effects using the same basic technique. Okay. I'm going to, I've created an anchor. See my anchor there? Little loop. Just a little one. I don't need a big old loop. I just need a little one. In fact, it will look better if I don't have too much of a loop. I'm going to anchor that on my peg. I'm going to start by wrapping around this center peg, come right back down to the bottom, put a little dab of glue at the back, come up, wrap around this top peg, Put a little dab of glue at the bottom. Come up. I'm wrapping from the opposite direction. I'm coming inside and wrapping down. Put a little dab of glue at the bottom. Wrapping around this other outside peg, making sure my paper stays level. And pushing it down as necessary so it's not writing up and stacking. I don't want it to stack. I just want it to go over the top. Now I'm going to put a little dab of glue at the tops of my petals. Up here, I'm going to wrap around the outside. I'm going to put a little glue down this side. And across the bottom, I'm going to tear that off. Make sure everything's bonded good. I'm going to pull my base peg and tap these up and pull that off. Here's petal number two. Okay. Move this out of the way temporarily because I'm using basically the same color. And it won't show. Here's the beginnings of my flower. If I want to use it as a flower, let's get this base peg put back in. We'll need five of these. So I'm going to come in with my base peg again. I'm going to create my little anchor. I'm going to, you do want to make sure when you're creating your anchors that the glue is not wet inside the little circle or you can have problems pulling it off of your base peg. <laughs> Ask me how I know that. 
because everything you guys could possibly have a problem with, I've already had a problem with. <laughs> I've had to learn. <laughs> I do not want to glue the paper to my base pig. So when you create that little circle, make sure you don't have glue on the inside of that little circle when you wrap it around your base peg. Okay, I'm doing the first peg in line, the second peg in line, coming back around. Each time I'm gluing the bottom, that's doing two things. One is it's going to hold things together nicely. Two, it reminds me to check and make sure the stuff is not stacking up down here but is laying flat and behaving nicely. Oops, I got behind my picture there. Okay. So the store reopens tomorrow. For those of you who weren't here when we discussed that, not tomorrow, Monday. The store reopens on Monday. I'll be sending you out a newsletter after class today. In that newsletter, we'll have some fun specials starting on Monday, some kind of early bird specials, because why not? Got to reward you guys for coming back. So we'll have some fun early bird specials for you. And we... I promise that I'm going to send links to some of my favorite quilling sites. <laughs> this is a husking board. Um, I don't know if they've had these in um, France, but this reminds me a great deal. You know, I probably have a net and it might still be in the mailbox because our life has been so crazy lately that the mail has not gotten in real timely. So it's very possible I have your card and don't know it. <laughs> <clears throat> well, they had this little board um, years ago. I don't know if any of you had one. I think I did. And it was it would work just fine for this process. It was called a thingamajig. And it was for wire wrapping. And this is basically the same concept. In fact, one of the internet artists that I was watching to learn how to use this board did the first couple demos with paper, and then she was wrapping wire and making some jewelry things in the second half of her video. It would help if I weren't so sloppy with my glue. I'm just wanting to make sure I clear all that glue out of the holes before it dries. Because I don't want to be limited in the pegs that I can use because I got glue in all the spaces. Okay, come back down here. We need two more. And then I want to show you how we can put these together. So I'm going to glue a little. Get myself. Oh, that was bigger and crazy than it needed to be. I'm going to create myself a little anchor. Just a little tiny loop is all you need. And a little loop will look bigger here, or will look better here than a big loop would because we want to, we, you know, the, the loop is not part of our design here. It's just a convenience to hold everything, <laughs> hold everything together. So I'm wrapping around my base. I'm coming up and around the second peg up, come around. 
I'm putting a little dab of glue at the bottom. Two reasons for the glue. One is to hold the design together. The other one is to remind me to make sure that my paper is not writing up as I wrap it. This time, as I go to these outside, I'm going, I've been going this way, but that obviously won't work because that would put my paper inside. You know, there would be no way to wrap it down. So I'm going this way around that peg, coming in the opposite direction. I hope that makes sense what I'm saying there is it's and then i'm coming to the inside and wrapping around the outside of this peg again i want you to notice as i'm working here how much it adds to this design just to put this paper then around the outside before i take this off I just have three little loops otherwise, but it actually finishes off the pattern when I come around the entire thing. And sometimes you'll see quilling artists wrap it twice just to make it a really firm, nice pattern. You don't have to do that, but you can. There's no reason why you couldn't. Okay, I'm going to pull my base peg tap this up a little bit and this will slide right off the other pegs now i have four done i'm going to make one more <laughs> Come on. okay i'm going to put my base peg back in it's going one row below the half circle design I'm coming down into the the lower part just a bit I'm going to make my anchor I'm going to create a little circle there that does not have glue in it and that's going to anchor my piece I made it big enough I might have made it too small this time. Oh, it still went on. Okay. Wrapping around the first peg. Down to the bottom. Add a dot of glue. Doesn't need a lot of glue, obviously. I would I may be using more than I need if I'm having to clean so much off my board all the time. So keep, you know, make your, sure you're using your needle nose glue bottle and keep the glue line light. We just need a dab, just a tiny amount to hold the design together. Coming back up here, make sure everything lays down nicely. I'm going to Put a little bit there as I wrap around. Now I'm going to come up here. I'm going to put a little bit here. Here. And here. I'm going to wrap this piece around. Around. I'm going to secure this to the side and the bottom. I'm going to tear this off, and now we have five petals. I'm going to remove my anchor peg, tap this up just a little, and this will lift right off the pegs. And now, let's look at what we can do with this. You know what? I just made that one bigger than the others. I put it in the wrong place. I'm going to keep that. Make one more. Look, I put my peg in the wrong place. It's bigger, so I need to go make one more. Sorry about that. I just got all carried away. Put my pig in the wrong spot. Usually you don't have to move your pigs much when you're doing this, but you do have to. It's easier to remove the design from the anchor pig if you pull the anchor pig off. So let's do...
What's Kathy talking about? Rebecca. Oh, she found one, yeah. The, the, uh, what was it called? The, the Book of Paper Pulling Techniques and Projects with Paper Filigree. Really good book. I'll watch for that one, Kathy. Thanks for letting me know. It's also a good idea with the dry shampoo. That's the downside. You never know when you are buying used books if they will have a cigarette smell or something to them. So the dry shampoo, that was a great idea. Okay, got my pegs in the right spot this time. And you can see that once you get going with this, you could do a lot of these in a short period of time. It takes a little longer when I'm stopping and talking and showing you things. But when you just get going, it really goes pretty fast to make these designs. I'll keep that one that I made too big because I like it. I could make more and I can use that one that I made my mistake on. Okay, so here's what this looks like as a flower really a five petal flower or I could make it a six petal flower but isn't that pretty that's beautiful so there's how I you would use it as a flower but let's try something different let's put the small ends together I think if I want to use this as a design, well, I can use it like this by putting the small ends together, or I could slightly elongate my pattern, and I think I could get a five petal. Yeah. I think I could get a five petal out of this. Let's see what happens if I stretch these out a bit. Maybe that's the trick. No. Huh. I expected these to fit five pieces, but I think maybe I have to make the point sharper in order to be able to put five pieces together. But it is pretty like that. Okay. I think I like it best as a flower, though, so... I also want to show you this one that I did. This one was actually done with this size petal that I did here. This is exactly the same design, but you'll notice that this one has pointier petals. If you wanted to have pointier petals and not kind of squared off petals like this one has. You know how they're kind of very, um, they're um, very uniform. And if you want it to have pointier petals, the only thing you do differently is you don't put glue on the ends here as you're making them. And then you can stretch these and move these around and make elongated petals and pointier petals. Does that make sense? 
this is exactly the same design, except one of these patterns I did using the very first row. This is the purple one, the purple pattern. And if I move this peg down one space, like I did accidentally making this one, if I move that peg down one more space, then I have a more elongated petal. So you can use them as long pointy petals, or you can use these as pretty uniform petals. Charma says, smush it. <laughs> and I could very easily make this into a six petal flower if I wanted to by simply making one more and making this a more solid pattern by putting in one more one more petal just for the sake of illustration i'll use this one we know it's too long just to get the idea of what the design would look like as a six petal flower okay there we go so we've got that let's make a heart how are we doing for time honey 311. Well, we got lots of time. Okay. Knowing myself as I do, and the fact that I will lose these pegs if I don't keep them in a the little drawer, I think I will fix that. Let me see. Oh, I want to talk about one other thing real quickly here. I'm not telling you not to buy this board. In fact, I actually like this board a lot and we'll have them i'm listing them this afternoon and we will have them when the store opens on monday in fact because you guys have been so patient with all the quilling stuff all the quilling is going to be 10 percent off on monday so this board was not only available but it's on sale um but i want to mention to you that if budget's tight and you do, just can't quite, you know, spend extra right now. You can actually do all of these designs by using your, this is just a piece of cork board, but you can use your quilling board that you have from your kit. You can flip it over and I have wax paper on mine right now but you can put grid paper on here, quarter inch grid paper, and you can do all these designs with pen, with just a pen, just, you know, stick pens by sticking them through. This is an illustration from the, from the kit I told you that I used, but you can stick your pens through grid paper and you can do the same thing with pins instead of buying a separate tool if you want to do that. Now, I like being able to just, I don't want to have to mess with my tools a lot. I just want a tool for the job. And I personally prefer to use this little jobby. But, and if you're doing wire, you definitely want this one because the pins are not going to hold up to pull it, you know, jerking and pulling on wire these are are pretty strong and you're not going to hurt us but i hope that makes some sense what i'm trying to say and i'm not saying well okay all right now next we're going to make hearts isn't that pretty okay I have to remember my pattern here. I have a little cheat card. And in order to do the heart, you're starting at that base. You're skipping one. You're going up one more. That's not, that's going to be too small. Okay, let's double that. Let's see, how did I do that?
is the top. That's the next one down. This. One, two, three, four, five. We'll try this. I'm not positive I have them in the right places, but we'll soon know whether or not I do. Let's see. Let's use a different color. Let's use pink. This pretty pink here. I still have a couple more tools to show you, believe it or not, for quilling. I want you guys to feel confident that you know, you know, when you sit and watch a video or look at a book that you know about all of the basic and the not so basic tools of quilling. We still have a couple more tools to talk about. We have this one. Mine is misprinted. I think yours is fine. But mine is misprinted. I kept the misprinted one on purpose because I didn't want you guys to get it. And it didn't matter so much to me. But we're going to talk about using this one. We're going to talk about using um, a a mold that has little half circles on it. We're going to talk about using that. We're also going to talk about using a border buddy tool. And then I think we will have covered everything conceivable <laughs> in quilling. <laughs> I can't think of anything we won't have talked about by then. I'm so happy that you guys have your puppy now, Mary. <clears throat> okay. Can you get quilling supplies in, in France, Catherine? Okay. Let's give this a shot. I am going to create myself a little anchor here. Hold. Hold this over, leave myself a little unglued part in the center. Make sure it's flat which mine is not, and straighten this out so that it lays flat. Okay, I've got myself, oops, got myself a little anchor made there. You can see it. I'm going to put this on my peg. Stop it. It's trying to unglue on me. Okay, I'm going to put this on my peg. I'm going to wrap it around the first one, just like we did last time. I'm going to put a little glue at the end, just like last time. I'm going to come up and around here. A 
we'll go to the end. I'm going to do the same thing we did last time. I'm coming up and around that peg. Gluing it a little bit on the bottom. Down and around. <laughs> and Mary, if you will um text or email a picture of Gemma with you and your hubby if you want your family. We will put it in the newsletter so everybody can see your new edition that you've been talking about for months. Night, Annette. See you later, friend. So send us a picture and we'll put it in the newsletter. I'll put it in today's newsletter if you send it pretty quickly. And it's your choice. You can send just Gemma or you can send a picture of you and Gemma and your hubby. Whatever you want to do. Okay. Now I'm coming. I wrapped around all my pegs like I did last time. And now I'm going to bring this up and around. I'm going to put a spot of glue at the end of each of these, including the center one that's a little lower. And I'm going to wrap around. And then I'm going to, this is something that I learned a little while I was working. I take my tweezers and find where I want that to join. And then I just kind of give it a quarter turn and it crimps my paper a little bit there. So I get a nice sharp point down to that peg there. It's not real sharp there, but by turning, by catching it with my tweezers and pulling it around just a quarter turn, I get a better point on that. I'm going to glue down this side. Around the bottom. I'm going to tear it off. Looks like I've got my spacing a little wider this time than I did last time. Which is okay. My heart can be a little different in the different iterations. I think I put it... I think I see just like before if you take your base peg out then you can just kind of slide these off now I can still manipulate this once I take it off but there's my heart now I think it gave me a little sharper heart last time because I put the pegs closer together so let's try doing that this time You can see that there's nothing carved in stone about this. You try, you know, it's trial and error. You try stuff and you see what you like. I'm going to try it again. I did want to point out that's basically the pattern for how you do it, regardless of your peg placement. That's basically the pattern for how you do it. So here's one heart. Here's a wider version of the same heart and if you're making a heart out of it i recommend that you actually pinch the bottom of that to give it more of a heart shape if you want to make several of those you can actually make a really pretty flower out of the hearts by joining them together and i thought that turned out pretty and all i'm doing is just gluing my heart designs together but it creates an interesting and very different dimension. So that's how we do our hearts. Let's do, you can do leaves on here. Let's look at this little leaf I did last night. 
In fact, let's switch from the heart and let's work on some leaves because that's the that's kind of how you wrap it regardless of where you put your pins. Let's look at those again. This one is big and wide. This one's narrower. I think I like the narrower one better, but you're building up, you're creating a base peg and then you're bringing one up, then you're bringing one higher and then you're going higher and um, following the contours of the circle around to let your loops get smaller as you go. So we've been working all on the circular part of our circular part of our board. We're going to do one more on the circular part. Then I think that we should um, wrap a couple of things like we did on our comb and see that we can do basically the same thing we did on our comb. So let's try that too. I don't want a real big leaf, so I'm going to think. Keep this relatively small. Let us up one more here. This time I'm not going to, it's going to be very big. I just want them closer. I think I'm going to like this better. This is almost going to look like a, um, what do you call it? Um, I had the name in my head when I started that sentence. Um, Japanese leaf, a ginkgo. A ginkgo leaf. I'm going to grab a couple of pieces of green here. It's black. Oh, black. <laughs> you guys could see what I was doing off camera. I was untangling my papers. I'm kind of chuckling at myself. In fact, if we really wanted to create a ginkgo leaf, I think we could take that center peg. This is going to be a really tight wrap because I have all these pegs really close together. And I just managed to pull every one except the one I wanted. I'm going to try and create a ginkgo leaf. I have not done this before, so we'll be seeing together. <laughs> how this turns out. <laughs> but I'm going to try and create a ginkgo leaf because I think they're pretty and that would be something that would be fun to include in a Japanese design. So, or an Asian design of any kind. Come on. There you go. All right. I'm going to put a couple pieces together here because I expect it to take a couple pieces to do all these wraps. I'm still going to start with a little loop at the bottom. I'm so excited for you, Mary. Very happy for you and your husband to have your puppy. I know how much that means to you to have a puppy. Very happy for you. I bet you're just having so much fun with her too. 
course, there's all the potty training and things that come with puppies. But okay, I'm going to wrap up around that first center peg. No, I'm not. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. I'm going to wrap up around that first center peg. I'm going to put a little dab of glue at the bottom. I think that's going to be especially important with all these pegs I have. I'm going to wrap around this first peg. It's going to be a really tight job. I'm going to put a little glue at the bottom. It's going to be very important to keep this design flat as I go. I'm going to come up to this first one, wrap around it. The other thing that's going to be important is because the pegs are so close together, I'm going to want to check the other end now and again to make sure I'm not missing any pegs in my pattern. I'll show you what I mean. Let me get another round on here. You can see that it's all variations on a theme, isn't it? No matter how you go about doing this, you know, no matter what your design is, you're following the same basic steps each time, right? Now, it is, I have one there that's trying to climb up, so I have to smooth all that down, get everything down where it belongs. Okay, I can check from the end. Oh, I've got one writing up, up here. So I'm going to take that last loop off. I'm going to rewrap the loop. What it's doing is it was trying to sit on top of the pay on top of the wrap from next door because they're very close together. So I'm taking that back off. And I'm wrapping it so it will stay flat. Yeah, obedience training is especially important when you have such a, we're going to have such a big dog, you know. Okay. Same thing's happening here because I'm very close to the peg next to it. The paper's trying to lay on top of the next door paper. So I unwrapped it. And I'm making sure that it's laying all on its own. It's not laying on top of the neighboring paper. There we go because I want this to stay really flat. If you don't stop and straighten these out as you go, guys, it will never lay flat as never lay properly in your design. So you really stop and make sure that you keep these behaving as you go. And when I said you can check your designs, Look at the end here. I'm making sure that I'm not missing any pegs as I go. <laughs> I love puppy kisses. I know some people don't like to have their face washed by a dog. I think it's A-OK. -okay. Bryce, well, Bryce is not too bad about it. Lauren really hates it. Margie really hates it. I think it's just fine if my dog wants to kiss my face. <laughs> okay, now with my ginkgo leaf, I'm going to do what I did with my other designs. I'm going to add a little glue to my ends here. I'm going to wrap my 
paper around the outside. I'm going to take my tweezers. I'm going to find, I'm going to push it down into my center peg there. I could have even gone a little wider on this, I think. But I think it'll be all right. I think I could have even put one more row on this ginkgo leaf to really get the impression of being a ginkgo. But I think it's going to be a cool leaf no matter what. <laughs> okay, once I have all of my pattern in, I can remove my base peg, push that up a little, it'll slide right off. That's a pretty good ginkgo leaf, actually. Uh-oh, except that my... My glue did not hold to my huh. My glue did not hold to my base piece. I'm gonna try it. See if I can put a little dot in there. And I'm going to pull this together with my tweezers. Maybe put a little there we go. Oops. Now I got a big hole in the middle though. Darn it. Well, you live and learn, guys. You live and learn. Well, didn't turn out exactly as I wanted because I just smushed it. I think, well, it actually, it looks pretty good now that I look at it. Let me show you it's my little snippers. It's a, still a pretty fun ginkgo leaf. Okay. Now I can also use this other side of the board for a variety of designs. I think we should make one of those beautiful leaves that everybody liked before. I think we should make one of those combing designs like we did before. Let's see if we can get my pattern for that. These are kind of here. Oh, strip one, two, three, four. It's right there. Okay. Small round leaf. Okay, leaf. Wide at the bottom, skinny at the top leaf. Okay. So we want we can do the same thing here by putting our pegs in a row. We can use this just like we would use our comb. <laughs> oh no, your air wasn't working. That's not good. <laughs> yeah, my grandma didn't want us to sleep with her pets either. That didn't happen. <laughs> I've slept with my pets my whole life. <laughs> I'm just going to put a bunch of these pegs here. And then we're going to use this just like we would use our quilling comb. So let's get some more. Do I have enough green? Oh, I don't have enough of that green. I have a new pack of green. Let's get this new quilled creations. This is this one I'm going to use is one of our new colors from Quill Creation. This is number 1512. And it's called some of them em Emerald. We're going to use this for our leaf this time. So I'm going to take one strip off. 
I'm going to create a little anchor in the middle. Just a little bubble in the center there of my paper. I'm going to put it on my center peg. I'm going to start, uh, let's see. I have to say that while I can do the same job as I can do with my comb using this, I really do I really do like the comb for some of these jobs. I enjoyed working with the comb and the flea comb and all of the things we've done. Okay, so I'm going to start at center peg, and then I'm going to go up one and down one. So. <laughs> this paper is less flexible than some. It's a jewel tone paper, and it is not wanting to bend it around. Okay, go up one, down one, up one, down one. All I'm doing is adding one peg each time and wrapping around. Remember how we did that? Up one, down one. Up one. This is our biggest petal. I'm going to Add some glue to the side and I'm going to tear that off. <laughs> you know, some days it just doesn't pay to get up in the morning, guys. <laughs> oh, my design just unwound on me. It's going back in. So I guess it's okay. But <laughs> okay, there's our longest petal or our leaf. My pegs back in, all pulled out on me as I was working. And let me get another strip. And step two, I'm going to do one, two. I'm going to make two of these. And I'm going to put my anchor on my pen. I'm going to go up one, down one, up one. Down one, up one and around the same bottom peg. I'm not going up this time. And I'm going to 
glue this strip in place, tear it off. Really? That's two in a row that have pulled off on me. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys right now that you can do this on this board, and it is just fine to do that. I personally <laughs> will use the comb because <laughs> the pans don't pull out of the comb. But I started it. I'm going to finish it. <laughs> I just want you to know that you can do designs. And the beauty of this is that I've seen some designs where they are, and I have to get more confident than I am at this point, that they're using multiple rows and working off of multiple rows. So what this has that the comb does not have is the ability to be able to move into more than one row at a time. <laughs> yes, SSC is, is opening Monday with a regular schedule this week. We will have What's New Wednesday on Wednesday. We will have our Thursday class. I don't know if you can locate one of those kits over there, honey. Can you go see if you can find that Heartfelt Creations poinsettia kit? It's over um, by Bryce. I'm talking to you. Sorry. Can you pull out your earphones so you can hear me? Will you go over by Brittany's desk and see if you can find the Heartfelt Creations poinsettia kit? We're going to do a Christmas project on Thursday. We're going to do the Heartfelt Creations Christmas Flowers Kit on Thursday. Background it should be in the boxes, honey, in the project boxes on the wall. And there'll be like 16 or 17 of them. Okay, we got that one. Got that one. Clip off this strand a little bit more. I'm going to smush this. Let's smush this a little bit. Let's smush this a little bit. We got our first parts of our leaves. Okay, take off this your center, strip two, strip three, we're going one, two, just two positions. So create an anchor again. It's not in the project boxes there? No. Is it in front of her desk in one of those project boxes? No. Well, I'll have to find them. I'll call her if I need to. Okay. This time I'm doing two up and two down. Tear my strip. Okay. 
Ken calmly. <laughs> yeah, girl, you cracked me up. <laughs> yeah, that's what I had to do is just pull my pens out and not pretend I'm trying to keep them in there. <laughs> I'm going to smush this a little bit. I'm going to do another one of those. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hopefully, shipping will go off as normal this week. Margie is in the middle of shopping for a house and getting ready to sell her house. So, <laughs> yeah, we've all taken on a bit of insanity here in Oregon recently, I think. Interest rates have gone up. Let's all buy houses. <laughs> uh, Margie is in the middle. Coma's easier. Oh, my gosh. I'll bet that looks really cool, Sharma. And yes, it is easier. I just wanted to show that you can do it. And I will manage to show that before it's all said and done. But yes, it would have been much easier on a comb. Two up and two down. Glue it. I love those leaves. I love the idea that you put them all together in a frame like that. I'd love to see that. If you still have that, I'd love to see a picture of your of your leaf design, Sharma. I love fall colors. That would be fun to do a project like that. Okay. All right. And... That's it. So we've got our five pieces of our leaf ready to go. I'm going to take my center piece. I'm going to take my second piece. I'm going to start at the top and go clear to the bottom with my glue line. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to smoosh this at the bottom and lightly pull it in at the top. So I kind of get a little bit of a rounded design. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'll call Brittany and ask her where the kits are. Um, this will be one that because we have been closed, you won't be able to get in advance. But when you see it, you're going to want it. <laughs> so we'll have some... We'll have them available after class. I was going to show you today, but I did. I should have looked them up myself before I sat down here, and I didn't. Okay, so I'm pulling these all together at the bottom. Making sure that I have the widest part of the leaf facing down. And I'm going to kind of smush it at the bottom and kind of ease them together at the top. There we go. And there we go. There's our beautiful leaf done on our husking board rather than a quilling comb. You still get that gorgeous design. And I agree with Sharma, it's easier on the comb. I just wanted to show that it can be done on the board. You can do a lot of the things that you can do on a comb on this board. So let's kind of recap a little bit here. So your husking board comes with two different design areas. You have, and you can do some fun things with this, like doing um, 
designs inside boxes and stuff with this. So you can, you can use the horizontal and vertical part of your board, or they also have the circular part of your board. And some designs you might actually combine the, the two, but between the two choices of peg placement, you can do a lot of different things here. This also works with wire, so you can use it like the old thingamajig that we used to see. And the, when you're done, the pig self-store right into the board. Um, these are not expensive. It's not an expensive tool at all. And it's a nice little addition to have in your quilling kit. So that's what we do with a husking board. Let me show you again the a couple of the design ideas they had here. This is that book. Um, paper quilling for the first time. You can get this on eBay as a used book very reasonably. And um, I used to carry these in the store, and I was surprised to see that we were sold out. But we are paper quilling for the first time, and they have a section on husking, which is what this technique is that we've been doing. I love this the red, white, and blue stars. Isn't that pretty? And they have your peg placement here. They're demonstrating it with pins on grid paper. So if you have quarter inch grid paper, that's a really nice way to go too. Um, I think the pegs in the plastic are maybe just a little bit easier than doing it all with pins, but you can do it with pins on the back of your board. And let's see. Yeah. Oh, they had a couple of very fun ideas in here. Here are some more shape ideas. They have lots of things for wings and that kind of thing. I don't know if you can get into where this butterfly is. Let me, let me get in there. Yeah, there's a nice butterfly they've done using a husking technique. They're using a wrap design, just like what we just did, a little coil for the antenna, and then two husking designs for the wings. I think that's fun. And look at the design over here. Oops, the butterfly. Hey, look at that. That's all stuff we can do pretty reasonable. If you, if you look at the two leaves, we just did that today. And then the big leaves. Isn't that cute? It's beautiful. I'll leave it there in case you want to. Can we do that one, Debbie? I think we're actually, we don't have enough time to take that on today, Kathy. Here's another butterfly design in this book. What time is it? It's four. Yeah, I don't think we have time to take it on, but look at the shapes there. And you can do this. We just did, we just walked through these designs on the board. So I know you can do this. This actually, <laughs> this book actually has some other fun designs of what you can do with quilling paper. This is a good book to pick up. And you can get it for 5 or $6 on eBay right now. I, I picked up an extra copy last night, so I know you can. See the little basket they're making out of quilling paper? And then on one of these, they cut the basket in half and glued it to a card. There we go. See this one down here? Created a little picnic basket. So this book has some really fun has some really fun um, ideas. It's called Paper Quilling for the First Time by Ali Bartkowski. Bart 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 and um, yeah, I just wanted to introduce, introduce you to the husking tool and a little bit about what we could do with this tool. And 
that really kind of accomplishes my objectives for today. Thursday, assuming I locate it <laughs> in our myriad of things that have, we have more stuff up here than ever in our classroom because of the project downstairs, more and more stuff kept coming to the classroom. So I'm going to have to dig a little to find our heartfelt creations kit, but that's what I'd like to do on Thursday. So we'll do the heartfelt poinsettia kit on Thursday. It's one of those class kits that is now discontinued and I got a good deal. So you're going to get a good deal. Uh, we'll make three cards. On Wednesday, we will have What's New Wednesday. So there you go. Any questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom from anybody? Anybody got anything to share? Mary, I'd love to see a picture of your dog. And if it's okay, I'll share it. Um, Sharma, I would love to see a picture of the leaves that you created like this. I just love these leaves. I think they're so beautiful. And I'd love to see the one you did with multicolored leaves in a frame. So if there's no questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom, I will see you on Wednesday for What's New Wednesday. We'll be here at 5 o'clock Pacific time. That is 8 p.m. Eastern time. We'll run no longer than an hour normally for What's New Wednesday. And then on Thursday, Heartfelt Creations. On Saturday, we'll be back with more quilling till I have exhausted all the tools I want to show you <laughs> for quilling. I, in case you wondered, yes, I'm having a great time with quilling. <laughs> I've learned so much and I have so much more to learn, but I'm having a great time. I'll send you out a newsletter and... Um, and um, I will include the links of some of the of some of the channels I really love on YouTube for for quilling techniques. A lot of it might look familiar because we've used some of their techniques. So, all righty, that's it. I'm gonna say good night, Gracie. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up if you didn't do it yet. Good night, guys. <laughs>